Uh, hello to everybody. My name is Tanya, and I'll talk to you about uh, service communication. Actually, not uh, microservice, but microservice looks uh, better. And maybe I should add some blockchain or some Bitcoin uh, text to the slide to make it uh, a bit fancier. So, uh, first, it's disclaimer. Uh, actually, I've tried, I've I wanted to present this talk in uh, Russian, uh, but at the lunch I've been uh, talking to Ines, and uh, she said, and with a little notion of threatening, that some people who don't understand Russian will uh, quit. So I'll try to present it in English, and uh, maybe it's my way to disaster, or maybe not. Okay, so my name. So, uh, my name is uh, Tatiana Chuprina. In Russian, it's Tatiana Chuprina. And in Ukrainian, is I'm a person of million names. So, in Ukrainian, it's Tatiana Chuprina. And uh, letters Ya and I makes me a lot of pain in the life. So, uh, in all the my foreign passport, my name is written differently. It was right now, its current state is there. Before it was there, there. In uh, this, it's how Georgian people, uh, how Georgian people uh, see my name because it was real name that I have in my ski pass last uh, winter. But uh, in Ruby meditation, people just like contribute, wanted to contribute to my collection of my last names. So uh, my current state in this paper is this one. I right now I'm Chupura. So uh, really, I like it, and uh, because the previous one it was Chuprinas, <laughs> and my colleague, uh, one of my colleagues, said that it's like Mexican. <laughs> uh, so uh, right now, thanks you, <laughs> thanks. Right now, he called me like that. Okay, so uh, I'm Tanya, <laughs> and uh, today I'll try to talk about a bit about problematic of inter-service communication and the way to deal with it uh, with uh, HTTP, message queues, and how can be uh, RabbitMQ used for such task, and uh, a bit of code in uh, Ruby. So, but uh, before we go to microservices, I want to use some metaphor uh, to just to make some uh, points about problematic of this field. So, uh, Recently, I've returned from vacation, from travel, and uh, that's make me think about uh, airport, like a big, very big uh, microservice application. Uh, so it's like a big, very holistic uh, system, so I want to show you how baggage or luggage uh, trails through this system, and uh, how, uh, which services it's fine on this way. So uh, you came to the airport and claimed the service, service uh, luggage transportation. So you go to check-in or drop-off uh, desk, and uh, where people make your the first authentication. You authenticate with your ID, with your passport, with your ticket. After that, people do their uh, authorization. Uh, they validate if you have uh, right to take uh, the baggage with you on the plane. And if it's okay, uh, your baggage travels to some inside of the airport where security and uh, custom service, they do the validation if uh, you don't want to blow everyone with your uh, luggage or you don't uh, take some uh, illegal stuff. And after that, they do some magic and sort you rightly sort your luggage to right plane. After that, you are traveling through the sky, and after that, I'm sorry. Uh, after that, uh, on the destination point, uh, there is sorting again. Uh, some uh, luggage is traveling to other plane. Some luggage is traveling to the carousel uh, where people uh, find the luggage and take it with them home. So uh, this is very uh, airport. It's very very difficult system. And if you uh, look on the like big one, like uh, Paris or New York airports, you understand it's very massive. 
and difficult uh, system. And uh, there is one detail that makes everything possible, makes uh, traveling of the luggage and uh, make it on time possible. This is like baggage tech. Little details which uh, makes, us, makes everything possible. It contains all the information that every service needs. And uh, for me, it's, uh, when I claim my luggage from the carousel, it's my last name is very important. For people who just sort it, it's uh, name of the destination airport is important, so on. So uh, when we uh, have this tagged luggage, so this baggage system, it makes like event-based system. It's scalable because we just uh, can divide uh, this system into pieces and uh, add some high load where it needed. It's maintainable because if it's, uh, there is no little no more connection, so it's easier to understand, it's easier to maintain. So let's back to the clouds, let's back to microservices and apply some knowledge about this field to web application. Uh, so we have uh, <coughs> an application, like a product, which contains from little, little applications which are like, uh, don't make sense by their own, by, but they form like system uh, where are they in ensemble. So, um, what is actually makes this little application useful and uh, why they are useful? They are useful only because they communicate with each other, they communicate with uh, outer world by the API and they communicate with some inter-service uh, communication mechanism which we are like um, I'm describing right now. So, <clears throat> but there's a problem with um, inter-service communication if we are talking uh, from perspective of some person who worked with monolith before. Uh, this problem doesn't exist in um, monolith because we just have one application and it's uh, like works. There is no communication between other applications because it's just only one. And uh, there is so many ways to uh, deal with inter-service communication, but um, maybe all this uh, ways, it's sometimes it's well, uh, ways to to fail. Okay, so let's go to the first and simplest way to deal with inter-service communication. It's uh, by API with use of uh, JSON over HTTP. So we can, if we if we know how to build application who uh, correspond with uh, outer world with API, why can't we uh, reuse this mechanism for communicate these uh, services with each other? Uh, we can make it secure as we want. Maybe we just leave it with a basic house, but we have all the control on the situation. But the problem is that uh, <laughs> if we have so many applications and everybody know about, about each other and they have to communicate with each other, so it's a mess. For me, it was uh, even uh, difficult to draw these lines uh, <laughs> because it's a mess. <laughs> So I don't know how to support, how to maintain an application uh, a product if it it was not uh, pictures but uh, actual application. And the other problem is you can't be a uh, hundred percent sure that when you just knock, somebody will answer you. So <laughs> uh, the service can just uh, fall down because of some errors, or if we talk about like uh, some. Mm, free Heroku instances which are uh, sleep for some uh, time in the on the day. Uh, the first request to the service can be very uh, long, slow, and uh, it can fail by timeout. So uh, also we can't guarantee that infrastructure we don't fail. Uh, maybe everybody remember <coughs> the problem with Amazon this year and when they're like half of the internet will just fall down and f I'm just, I'm, maybe you <coughs> uh, hear my trembling voice, it's not because I'm nervous about the speech, it's because this station with Amazon is still pain. Uh, so there is like one approach to this to handle such situation, it's design failures to success, so it's like very common, 
but uh, I think that we have to speak about it more because it's uh, it's a way to do right a way a right way to do application. So we can uh, use powerful of I'm sorry. We can use uh, background jobs for handle such such situation, and uh, we can use it for uh, make a retry for of the request. So it's like make it a bit asynchronous and make it a bit safer. So the uh, like positive way of using JSON over HTTP is because it's easy and uh, it don't require additional no knowledge about. Uh, building some stuff. It's a bit dirty, yeah, but it's a great choice for small application and in my opinion maybe three or two nodes it's, uh, for such application, such way is enough. But if we are talking about big application, it uh, will be a huge failure in scaling and it will be massive pain for maintenance and if we are talking about Ruby, so <coughs> basically there is no like uh, common way to deal with HTTP. Yeah, we have some really good libraries, libraries but what we have in uh, standard libraries, uh, yeah. So if we try to uh, like extract communication from the process of communication between uh, services, so we can do something, uh, make something like that. Uh, so we can disable service interaction from the process, uh, put some external temporary storage for messages, maybe it's like uh, like something like mailbox or post office, and make everything asynchronous. So we like agree that uh, we can't, if we make a request, we can't uh, have answer right now. Maybe uh, in some rare cases it uh, should be like that, but for a uh, biggest part of request, make it asynchronous. And uh, there is some mechanism for such stuff. It's called message queues and it's come to web application from uh, operational uh, programming uh, when it's used for communicate between threads in process and uh, inter-processes uh, communication. So it's uh, in the uh, case of web application, it's message-oriented middleware, and um, it's uh, used different communication protocols. Uh, there is some different middleware for this. It's some Apache uh, stuff like Kafka, Cupid, ActiveMQ, some stuff from Oracle, GBoss, Mail.ru, which is not very uh, good friend in uh, Ukraine. So, uh, but I want to talk about RabbitMQ because uh, actually it's lightweight and it's easy to understand how to work with it and I really like it. I'm not an expert in the message queue and I wasn't work with other options but RabbitMQ works well for me. And the uh, reason, reason for use it is because it's written in, in Erlang. It's So it's written in Erlang, uh, it's fast and reliable, it's, um, there's like a lot of client libraries in uh, different languages. If you want to switch from Ruby to some, I don't know, uh, Go or Java, <laughs> you can do it and you can uh, take Rabbit with you. And Rabbit uh, as well, it supports advanced messaging queuing protocol, which is very nice, but as Actually, it can uh, work with HTTP as well. So let's uh, go and uh, to some principal model of communication in uh, Rabbit. So we have two applications, producer and consumer, and we have uh, in the middle of them the broker, Rabbit in our case, and uh, which contains in contains two uh, the principal parts, exchange and queues. Uh, so exchange, it's like mail in post, or in uh, case of a port, it can be like checking desk, uh, which receive message and uh, bins it to some queue and uh, put it there. So uh, Rabbit 
support different type of exchanges. First of them is direct. Uh, so in direct, you can just uh, use root and key and uh, set up uh, messages to some queues by this key, only by that. In uh, Funout, uh, message is broadcasted to all the queue which are uh, connected to this exchange. In uh, topic, topic exchange, uh, messages are transferred to queues by uh, connection by condition of sim some uh, pattern of uh, some regular expression by root and key or the message. And uh, if we return to a port metaf metaphor, so we will understand that actually this baggage uh, stuff, it's like a topic exchange because uh, all the services, they see on it and they see different information for them. So it's like topic by topic. Other uh, important part of uh, RabbitMQ is queues. So queues can have different options. Uh, first of them, it's name. They can be durable, uh, which means they will be uh, not will be deleted if the broker is restarted. They can be exclusive by some connection to Rabbit. Uh, they can auto delete if uh, all the uh, consumers of this queue are deleted, and have some additional argument for authorization and so on. Uh, binding is just uh, like uh, rules for connect uh, messages, connect uh, queues to exchange. Uh, they can be uh, these rules can be direct by root and key. Uh, we can uh, connect uh, queue to different uh, exchanges by multiple bindings or by mask. So, what about security in Rabbit? Uh, Rabbit support uh, TLS and SSL. And as well, it has uh, their own authentication authorization mechanism, so you can uh, do not allow some queues to connect to exchangers and uh, do not uh, allow some queues connect to some connection. So, so it's pretty secure. Uh, so how it install? It's pretty simple. In uh, if you use uh, Mac books and uh, you use Homebrew, it's just one uh, line of code in Terminal. If you are a Windows user, yeah, you have to hurt a bit, but maybe you are custom. Uh, but there is no painful dependencies, so yeah, it's good. Uh, actually, I wanted to say if uh, there is like other DevOps Heroku style like me, so you'll be pretty impressed that Heroku has not one, but many options to add on uh, Rabbit, so you have like options. Uh, client library for uh, Rub for Rabbit is called Bunny, and it's lightweight. It's like up to go. If you work in with uh, development environment, you just need to uh, install this gem and so on. You can just connect uh, to local uh, Rabbit, and it works. But if you are in production environment, you have to actually connect uh, to Bunny with authorization information and uh, with link to production instance of uh, Revit. A bit of code. So it's uh, like usage, it's a very, very simple publisher. Uh, so we connect to local uh, instance of Revit, which is run somewhere, we actually don't bother where. So we start connection, create channel. In this channel, we create some exchange. In our case, is direct. And we publish there uh, a message by root and key. So that's all. Uh, we, we close the connection. If we have to implement uh, consumer, so we just bind some queue to this uh, exchange and so on, and we can receive it. Uh, but actually, Bunny is what you need to um, start using uh, RabbitMQ, but there is some very sweet option like sneakers, which can uh, be used for implement a subscriber in a publish subscribe model. So it's uh, like a background framework for uh, Ruby and RabbitMQ. It's very, very uh, similar to Sidekick. It contains some workers. You have to uh, put it on some... Uh, some process and it uh, will be monitoring your rabbit, monitoring queues, and just get the messages and uh, perform some action on it. 
So this is a worker in the sneakers. So it's connected to QRuby and do some stuff. SCK, it's a command uh, for uh, inform Rabbit that our message is uh, processed and it can be deleted from uh, temporary storage. So there is different options. You can inform Rabbit that everything goes wrong and just uh, let this message stay in the queue and maybe some other uh, service will do something with it. So, <coughs> uh, prox of using message queues with uh, Rabbit MQ, it's uh, because it's scalable, maintainable, and lightweight. It's uh, difficult, in the same time, it's easy to set up and easy to use. Uh, but the con, uh, cons is that uh, it's need additional infrastructure. You have to somewhere put your instance of RabbitMQ. You have to somewhere place your background workers. And it can be overkill for a little project. For the project, it will be like uh, if you want banana, you'll get monkey and jungle. So it's ra rails, or sorry, yeah, rails and uh, uh, rabbit. And uh, but it's as well, it's uh, need additional knowledge be because you just can't like start writing code. You have to understand what's a different type of exchanges, how it can be binned uh, to queues, how to set up it for security, and so on. Uh, in afterwards, I want to say that, like always, it's uh, it depends. In uh, last uh, uh, last paragraph, Sadepan, it's uh, actually uh, it really work well if the stock will be in Russian, because in Russian we don't have these uh, uh, expressions that it depends. We have to. It, de it depends on some context because one way can uh, be like a way of failure and the way of success. So for little uh, application, I will be uh, really hard uh, saying that uh, maybe uh, HTTP or JSON over HTTP it's a very good choice. But for uh, application which is uh, growing or just big uh, from the beginning. A message queuing and RabbitMQ, it's a very good option for designing inter service communication. So I want to, uh, I'll be very, uh, it will be very nice and I'll be very happy if uh, some of you will share your sto stories of building uh, inter service communication with Rabbit, Rabbit or without. So massive thanks to you for listening. So, thanks. <laughs> Some question? Yep. Um, <clears throat> you have a situation when a uh, server with your uh, Rabbit MQ uh, uh, have some troubles, for example, bad connection, and uh, actually, I mean, do you have some situation when a server with a Rabbit MQ is down after uh, reboot? But uh, as far as I understand the question is how to handle a situation was when you just try to push some message, but Rabbit is down, yeah? Uh, no, I mean uh, some payload, some you have some payload, and you know, server with your computer is down. After rebooting, they should uh, uh, repair uh, messages. messages and uh, queues where are they uh, stored because I've uh, shown that there is like a durable or not durable uh, uh, queues if this queue wasn't durable so it will be lost but 
it's up to you how to uh, how to design your system. Uh, RabbitMQ support a good cluster model with a memory and uh, a message to disk uh, model. Mm -hmm. uh, you can build a cluster, three masters uh, with uh, a disk storage media and somebody workers with in memory. When work is down, all data safe on disk. Mm -hmm. And uh, recovery after boot and other. Mm -hmm. uh, support uh, HA model when replicated to all servers. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, second question, um, do you have some blocking class, for example, you have some process that should be blocked uh, while queries uh, accessing, for example, in some synchronization. Yeah, you need to synchronize uh, 100 items, and you need to block some process. Do you have something like that? So, Revit, Revit MQ is just like an option of message queuing. So, if you want to implement something that will like block the queue, so yeah, it's possible to do this. So, sometimes the Revit MQ support uh, queues with blocking limits or blocking rights. Or it's it's Apparently, I, apparently I don't know, mm -hmm. but it's actually it's uh, asynchronous. Mm -hmm. okay. How to scale RabbitMQ <coughs> if you have a really huge application that um, has different uh, microservices located in different uh, locations? Uh, is it possible to have several RabbitMQ uh, instances and uh, how they synchronize if it's possible? So, uh, yeah, so I don't know your name, but uh, this is Mike. So he said already that uh, RabbitMQ supports clustering. So I forgot to add this to um, the talk, uh, but actually that's why it's scalable. Mm -hmm. so. Erlang is very scalable. <laughs> so so uh, can I share my experience? Uh, so uh, RabbitMQ is a message bus. So the pattern is the most important thing in this talk. Like, uh, uh, this is the way how to go from tight coupling to uh, loose coupling. Because uh, each time when you call the method which doesn't exist, there is an error. And each time you call, uh, you send a message and nobody cares, then it's fine for your application. It doesn't break at this point. And uh, it, it scales your application itself because instead of having your huge monolith, you have the message bus when everybody talks and the participants of the communication are standalone and they are easy to scale because they are small. That, that's the main benefit of, of this uh, message bus, right? Yeah. Scaling, uh, it, uh, it's easy for scaling. The only, and one more thing, I uh, know about one technology, one message bus which nobody cares about and it's, uh, the author is the same guy who made Redis so he made it a year and a half ago and stopped developing because nobody cares so he made the message bus in memory so super fast uh, message bus Okay, so no more questions, thanks